Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. I'm David. And we're here to talk to you today about concrete. Yes, we are. <laughs> Why was everybody shaking their head? <laughs> thought it was coming. I knew what you were doing. We got to answer a question today. It's Q&A day. It's been Q&A day a lot. We're actually doing some mixes today, but all of them have to deal, all these questions have to deal with these mixes. So, okay, so um, Film Factory, ding! Film Factory commented, thank you, John. I'll be reading those articles you've mentioned. Changing the discussion a bit, what technique should I look into if I want to least slump and increase thixotropic properties? Really? Least slump? If I want the least slump and increase thixotropic. When we say, I, I got to define these things, because right. there might be some confusion. So if I want the least slump, that means the smallest number, right? So let's say a two to a three inch slump. Right. So it's a pretty stiff mix. Yeah. And increased thixotropic properties. So thixotropic means a time-dependent shear thinning of a substance. Yeah. When I was in school, they'd bring the jar up to the front of the room, and they'd hold it up, and it just looked like solid soil. So it just looked like, you know, totally solid. And they'd shake it up, and it just looked like a thin milkshake. Okay. That, that energy that went into it made you know, made it become liquid. Okay, so what we're saying here is we want increased slump, so that two to three inch slump as opposed to a, a seven to eight. Slump. The least slump. Oh, I'm sorry, a decreased slump. Right. So a two to three inch slump as opposed to a pancake or a right. seven to eight inch slump or a 28 inch spread. And we want increased thixotropic properties. Now the way that's said to me is increased time dependency of thinning of a liquid or of a substance. Okay. So you actually want, now I don't think that's what he meant or that person meant, Film yeah. Factory. I think they meant a resistance to the thinning of the material over time. Well, yeah, if you want less slump then. Right. Yeah. yeah. It seems counterproductive to have increase in thixotropic. Well, increased in the time dependency right. for fluid. So let's just, let, we could go down both roads. Okay. So. I mean, there's a lot that you haven't told us here, and that's like water cementitious ratio, crushed aggregate, rounded rock. So we're going to make a couple of something. We're going to say this is like a class uh, D mix or something that's used on a pavement. Right. Here we want 650 flexural strength. Okay. Around 6,500 6, PSI on our compressive strength because it's 10%, right? So let's just assume it's a 6,500 PSI mix. It's a totally another different video. Oh, totally. So that's a, a 6,500 PSI mix. We've never done this mix before, so let's say our standard deviation drives that up to 7,700 PSI. Yeah, could be. So let's say we have um, a 10 PSI per pound, 28-day efficiency for our strength. Right. So if we have 10 PSI per pound, we have 7,770 7, PSI 28 days that we need. That means we need 770 pounds of total cementitious. Per yard. Let's round it down to um, 750, okay. just to make math easier. And uh, because it's a C dot or a DOT specified or an FAA mix, we'll probably have a 0.42 on the water cementitious. So 750 times what I say 0.42 on your right. water cementitious. So that's 315 pounds of water. Of water. Right. For a 0.42. So how do we get our slump? The type of rock, we'll use 1750 on our crushed rock, 6757 because we want flexural strength. Right. We'll just use a washed concrete sand, 1250 pounds or somewhere around that depending on the specific gravity. Sure. Great state of Colorado, so we have to use an air and training agent. Right. 0 0.5, 0 0.75 fluid ounces per hundred weight. Okay, gives it, that gives us how much air? Five to eight percent? Five and a half to seven and a half percent, right. I believe, is the CDOT recommendation or what they want the specification. So it really comes down to the water reducer. Now, what have become popular is high range of water reducers. But for a two to three inch slump, you don't really need a polycarboxylate. Now, it's not that you don't need a polycarboxylate. If you're going to use a polycarboxylate, you can only use a spit of it. Like one and a half, maybe three ounces per hundred weight, and that's pushing it. What you should be using instead is a naphthalene, a lignin, or a melamine, an older technology, something that works off of electronegative potential. So I think somewhere around three to six fluid ounces, maybe a little higher per So that'll give you your initial slump. Then the question is, what's going to stop that as we're moving the truck, it's starting to liquefy? Yeah, you know, maybe you're pumping or maybe your conveyor bel right. belting it out to the pavement, something like that. So you don't want it to bump up to a four to a six, 
with continuous mixing or agitation. That's right, because it'll have a tendency to segregate. You start to get that water bleed out and those kinds of things. Especially if you're using a slip form paver. Right. Where you need it to stand up. Right. No matter what, because you, right before it like comes out as a, a freaking rectangle, you know, it's a whole bunch of stingers, you know, putting it into that shape. Right. So if you, if it doesn't have a good viscosity to it, you know, that resistance to lateral shear, it'll just... Right. So the best way I think of doing that, what do you think it is? I got it. I don't know. Tell me. Come on, guess. Well, water causes problems, so right. you know we either reduce the water or we use the high range to uh, help us with that. High, well, the water reducer will help us reduce the water, but high ranges oftentimes cause that, that slow pancaking out. Mm. So they're hard to use, but it's something that we talk about a lot, actually. That's really flipping good. I'll give you a hint. Brian Green used it to make a rock matching grout. <laughs> Gotta be colloidal silica. Colloidal silica. <laughs> colloidal silica. And we did that. True. We've done those um, right. segregation tests and whatnot. Oh, and we're about to run. Well, that one is on something else, but... Yeah. When we were doing that uh, flight line up in um, up in Eagle, right, it was with a slip form paver, mm -hmm. and we started at the plant at a seven inch slump. We ended up at the back of the slip form paver at about six and a half inch slump. Yet as it went through that slip form paver, it kept its shape, mm -hmm. which nobody really understood why. And it's because colloidal silica is just that's one of the secondary benefits when it comes to certain types of concrete, especially when you're using smaller particles that it starts kicking off reaction and changes up that behavior of the fluid. Right, and you know, there's some controversy on the issue, but we do get that particle packing. Yeah. And so those very small particles, it, it's like building a sand coming at the beach, you know, you just, you get that tightness um, right. from that full gradation. Every good technology has a controversy to it. <laughs> I mean, I think, that's how you know you got a good technology. There's yeah. a good controversy. People get pissed off and right. angry. Yeah. That's the best type of uh, material out there. So hopefully you answered your question. Let us know if you got any other concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Are we giving anything away this month? I'll think of something. <laughs> a bottle of Marmite. <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> Thanks for joining us. Go Concrete! And be down.